Good morning! It's not afternoon here yet, but come on in and let's see if we can all squeeze in here. <laughs> We're going to try because today what I have done, it was my watering day today and some people actually follow my watering schedule that if you want to see it, you can ask for it and I will give you a copy. Uh, I've been using it for quite a while now with very good results, lots of variety in the watering schedule. Uh, so today was watering day and today was just the water flush or full water soak so it went a little quicker and I thought I should share a few things with you of what I do on this day because I have a little bit more time. Now, all the orchids I own are in this room right now. I left them here. It means I still have to move them, but that's okay. It's all for you. So um, what I did was all the ones that are in bloom are over on this side. The dendrobiums I've left here on the table, and the ones that aren't in bloom, don't let me forget. <laughs> holler at me because once I said this and forgot, but I will not forget the ones that aren't in bloom are on this side. So all my orchids are in this room and we want to discuss humidity. Our furnace has been on steady. We are, um, right now I can see where actually about zero. It's the warmest it's been, so it's just about freezing. But we have been in the, uh, 17 often, regular, 20, <laughs> way below freezing, and the furnace is in a lot, and on a lot, and it's very drying. And this is not a grow room. It can never be a grow room because even though I have misters and humidity going on, it's not enough to affect this big room. So quite often in the last month, it, we've been running around 37. And until I got my better humidity tester instead of the little cheap one, from Ken, I didn't know how dry it was. And uh, we've made steps to fix that. So twice a day, I get my big misting container. And I, I, some of them I'll go close and do the roots. But mostly what I do is the air. Now, they say don't do the flowers, so try not. But I just, I just go around, and sometimes if there's aerial roots, I'll give them a little squirt too. But this is what I do, and I might do it a couple times a day because it's the kitchen. It's the room we're more at, and uh, the new windows, I'm supposed to paint the boards that they've done, and I've been playing, and I haven't painted. So, um... <laughs> I can't put the LED strip lights on, so it's a little too dark most of the day over here till I got my lights on. And also, it's been very cold and I've been grouping them together for humidity because they do much better group together for humidity. And Jack's always lecturing me and he says, you should make a list, you should have a, an agenda. <laughs> Well, I usually have an agenda, but I am not good at lists. And, uh, but I, I made a little few notes so I don't forget anything today. And one thing is group planting. Now, everybody says don't put more than one in a pot. They don't like big pots. Well, I disagree. I disagree. And I have quite a few big pots, and they're thriving. And except for this one, which had grew out over the heat vent, they're in beautiful bud. They're doing extremely well. Even the small ones I put in the white basket. Now I'll point them out when I do a close-up later. Uh, so group planting 
helps keep me maybe. They seem very happy like that. So um, the next thing I want to talk about on watering day is these are my favorite tools. <laughs> a magnifying glass and a light. Now, this is the time to look carefully under the leaves, near the roots, even on your flower stem for a scale or any critter of any kind. If you see anything, now is the time to take it off. Now once in a while, oh, um, I see the odd little, I think I took two scales off today and I'm trying to remember, I forget which ones, oh, I know which ones they were on. They were on the pot that broke. So I got two scales off of there. Keep your eye open for little brown spots. And I take, now you can use a Q-tip if you want to. You can also, if you have a bad infestation, I just use the water of the day that I'm using. So if it's Epsom salt water, if it's fertilized water, if it's black tea water, if it's seaweed extract water, that's what I use. And I still think these from the dollar store are the nicest thing to wipe with. They're gentle. Under the leaves, you're very light. And I can get any scale I find off with this. But if you find a bad infestation, you're probably going to have to use a Q-tip and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and dab those little rascals and get them off. And if you are vigilant and you say, okay, watering day when I'm just doing a water flash, I'm through quicker. Let's really look. Let's really look at our orchids as if there's a murder in progress. <laughs> because in a way there is. There is a murder in progress and you can stop it with simple little tools. So that's the other thing I want to share. And also the pot that fell that I'm going to be uh, repotting because it's all broken. Um, there was one leaf and you can see where when it hit the floor it the edge of the pot dug into this leaf and this leaf finally went and I slid it down the center I just started ripping at the top I ripped and ripped and ripped and then you pull down and you find little spots that look like this that you don't want critters hiding in. And I always try and take those off now. It's a, a trick I learned only, maybe it was a year ago or so, but it is a good trick. So a good practice to keep that debris out of there. The roots grow easier and you have no little hiding spots. Quite often this can stay pretty nasty looking. So that's the other thing and um, because I'm going to be repotting the orchid that fell, I'm going to be putting the two orchids that are in this white sewer pot. Is it white? Yeah. <laughs> in the white sewer pot, in, in the one blue traffic cone I painted. So what I have done here, I'm not too sure when I'm doing it, but I'm going to be prepared. I've got some bark. Now, they call this medium-sized bark, and I used to use large, can't get it anymore. I don't want to pay a fortune for it, and, and I use, um, uh, oh dear. Okay, we won't worry about it. So this is fir bark, and this is what I use, but it seems to be their medium has gotten smaller, so I'm going to be mixing some lava rock with it. So I brought it in the house. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it, but I'm going to put some warm water in here. And I'm going to put uh, about, oh, a, a tablespoon of seaweed extract and maybe one teaspoon of cow in here. Stir it up, let it soak. And 
because of the size of the bark. And these are uh, la landscape lava rock, but it's black. It's a nice size. And I'm gonna, it will also help with humidity because um, we're dry in the winter and there's a sort of time in the spring when there's more rain, but last summer it was extremely dry, the heat dome. And so I'm gonna mix some lava rock in with the bark. So this is landscape lava rock. I got a big bag and um, it does need a good wash. So it will also be soaking. So um, I wanted to tell you that and, and the repot that I'm going to do. And, oh yeah, see now, this is why you make a list. Because sometimes in the week I think, oh, I should say this. Now, because it's dry, we're running our misters more. And if you have a mister, any kind of mister that's shooting air out, um, these are uh, the, the little discs. All of the ones I have, even if it's not the bowl mister, have the oscillating cool mist disc. Even those, please make sure the water is clean. So I went around the other day and I washed out every misting bowl, every container I use. Because what happens, if you feel that water, it's slimy, you look in there, it doesn't look good, wash it out because what happens is when they ozonate they break down the particles that's in the water and throw it into the air in a mist form but if that water is dirty you're also breaking up that awful stuff that's in the water and it's going in the air and I'm not a science person I just read about it and know about it and even worse if you have a mister that has a filter a hot mister or whatever and there's a filter you have to clean that filter regularly for the same reason so that's something I wanted to mention now I wrote down dead here and I'm not too sure oh <laughs> I wrote down dead and I'm thinking what on earth did I write dead for now I know now I know um, the two orchids that came in the mail from my lovely friend, a subscriber, and uh, Georgia, it was no one's fault. It was the, the floods. The, we still don't have a highway working here. You can come other ways. It's uh, tedious, long, maybe dangerous. Um, the main highway, they found some other routes, the Coquihalla up here, but the main part of the highway, they've just gone around. You're only supposed to use it for, uh, not emergency, but necessary traffic. So, um, so anyway, what happened was they were two weeks in the mail, freezing, the transport company didn't stop them from freezing. They didn't put them somewhere where, when Jack picked the, the heat pack out, it was an ice block. Everything was frozen and it took a while, but the plants turned to mush and they are dead. And that's why I wrote down dead. I did give up on them and I threw them out. And it's a lesson learned, but sometimes things happen and there's just uh, uh, no one's fault. It just happened. So, um... Oh, uh, okay. Um, so what I want to do is um, say there's no reason your orchids can't flower uh, every, every winter. Now these are coming in to bloom and they'll probably, a lot of them, be in bloom in May. They're wonderful. Except for the mini orchids do not last as long, but they're just as beautiful. So, And the dendrobiums, maybe a couple months, but the fells, I've had them last five months. Some maybe not, maybe on their condition or what's going on. So um, the only ones I've got that have not spiked uh, are ones that were either in spike last year in the summer, 
or they're new, newly bought from say February on last year, uh, or I just there seem to be regular summer bloomers, and I'm going to show you those when I'm through. So what I want to do is give you a quick close up and tell you a few things. Um, now this one, this is Fell Sogo Vecker, and this is the Pelora Orchid. It is still in bloom. It's been in bloom, oh, I got it November 5th. It wasn't in bloom, but it came in bloom after that, since I had it. And it's healthy, and it's still doing good. Uh, all my new little orchids came from Roehampton, and they're all doing good, except the ones that froze. So, um, I've got them there, and that's our little uh, tutorial for today. But I want to show you some close-ups. I do have, you know the little square planter with the grouping in? Well, I've been doing an experiment, and every once in a while I film how it's going, and I've been saving those videos to join together for a, a experiment. So I'm still working on that, but they're here, and I'll show you them. I don't think you can tell by peeking what I'm doing. So um, let's uh, get the camera, let's get that rolling, and thank you very much for being a part of our group. Where we just love sharing our orchids on the community channel. You can email me pictures and I will post them for you and then people can go through and look at them all. Maybe see something that you want to get on your want list. And, and we have spring in the winter time here. And it feels nice. Mom comes up and she looks. It does. It makes you feel good. And not just that, it makes you feel proud. You've done this by yourself. And it does take time and it does take an experiment here and there to get it just right for your conditions. Uh, but these are, I would say, mostly dry conditions unless it's raining outside. So, um, this is how they survive, and, and they're not living with high humidity, so it can be done. And the good thing about keeping your orchids near you is the more you walk around and look at them, you're breathing on them. And they just love that, and they take our breath in, and they put out some oxygen for us to breathe in. And so every time, you know, they say, um, Orchids love it when you pay attention, and it's maybe the, the air, the breathing. And people say they talk to their orchids, even better. <laughs> you can blow on them. They'll love it. So that's another thing about keeping them close. But it's nice to have them somewhere where you are a lot, and you can really enjoy them. Um, Maybe if I had a bigger house. I don't have a room for an orchid room. This is my orchid room, and I'm not disappointed. So I'm going to show you, because I do have to put them all in their proper place. Uh, they're all here, so this is how many I have. And no, I haven't counted them lately. So I'm in my bare feet, because my sandals were wet, and I'm dripping water everywhere. So let's just take this off of here. Now, I'm going to try. Now, before I forget, we will do the ones that aren't in bloom. As soon as I get a good hold of the camera. Here we go. The only ones that aren't in bloom are the basket. And even though it's been dry and the edges of the basket, uh, of course, are thinner and they dry out quicker. But the misting helps because the roots are coming up. There's lots of good roots. And one of them bloomed last summer, but they're all doing well. And next year, I promise you, this will be something just beautiful. So now this orchid in the red pot was my last one I had bought. It was a purple 
very hardy. The flowers lasted a long time. So um, this was bought late, put in this pot, and it's doing well. I haven't suffered too many limp leaves. Um, I water more at first. There's another thing. Sometimes they say, oh, let them dry out or whatever. Well, maybe it depends on where you are, but I have found being in just bark, no moss, because the moss will stay wetter longer, I give them the halfway of the week watering for the first couple months. And especially if they're in a small pot where there's lots of air, and this one has been very happy, and it has not shocked much. And uh, so that's why that one's not blooming. And this is my big lip fell and it bloomed in the summertime. It's getting a new leaf, it's still growing, and the root system is looking really good. So um, that's why this one isn't blooming. Now I have to go over here. This is it, you guys. You can plan and yours can bloom too. So now here, this one that is in a lamp that we cut the bottom off. This is where the, down here is where that light came out and down here was the base. And Jack cut it off and drilled holes in it because it's terracotta and I haven't painted it. But it has a finish. And this is an old fondue pot. So um, it flowers every year. It has been. And of course, this year it did this funny thing with these two strange looking flowers coming out from down low. And one day I'm going to unpot it and have a look exactly what is going on there. But this one did flower. Excuse me, it flowered. It was out on the table when we were doing the giveaways. Uh, so um, whatever time of the year, I forget that was. So it flowered late too, so that's why it's not in full bloom, but it does have those funny things, so I rated it to be over here. And this was a newer orchid that I put in this pot this year, and it's still doing well, and uh, there's a good root system coming. So I'm not worried about any of the new ones, and this is the one I'm not going to show you too much of a close-up that I do have an experiment going on. Um, so other than that, there is Fell Memorial Retig and uh, Retia, and she always flowers in the summer, but she looks good. And this one here, I have to apologize. I've been doing terrible with my slipper orchids. I need to get them in some different medium and <laughs> It's hanging in, but I am not bragging about it. So let's go over here. So over here we have Moon Glow, who I've had quite a while. She has an old spike that I cut low that did branch, uh, that did come out, and her flowers are opening quite nicely. Um, this is one from the greenhouse. Up here are some smaller ones very beautiful right here. This is the two that I'll be repotting in this pot down here. So we have lots of spikes still coming. My oldest orchid, she's beautiful. She's getting nice leaves, nice roots, and I think she's just going to be renewed, totally refreshed and renewed. So we have lots of spikes. There's our little Pelora Gorkid. And this is Fell Mini Mart. She's doing good. The leaves seem to be growing, especially not in the growing season. And this is one that was out in the greenhouse through 140 degrees. She's doing good. Uh, Medium sized traffic cone. A basket, I've had these in, they flower every year, they love the koi coconut matte fiber and bark on the inside. And I put that in all these little baskets that I found at garage sales. So, 
Um, this traffic cone, I stuck, the leaves were a little tight, so I stuck a paper towel in there until it dries. I, it's cool. I do have a fan going. Now, fans will dry out your orchids more, but just after watering, I have put the fan on. So there's lots of flowers coming there, and here, now this is the big one you can see where the three fell because it grew far out over the heater. Now it's still going to grow flowers, so it was my fault. It's very healthy. It has real good leaves. It's in a big pot. It's in a grouping. They're happy. Now that pot's a little heavy, but uh, no. These two are in a group pot, and they're just starting to open. They're like twins. They're doing everything together. Same amount of flowers. One branch coming. And this one has also a branch coming. Now this is an old leaf that dates back to when I got this orchid a few years ago. And, and both of these had suffered with scale. But they're not suffering now. They are very happy. And what I do with some of these aerial roots is I wrap them around. Uh, instead of sticking way out in the air, I have them out. So they're doing good. And uh, in the back here, <laughs> lots of flowers coming here too. So, um, and then the dendrobiums in my messy house, um, they're doing good. Okay, now one quick thing before we go, a surprise addition, if I can reach it. <laughs> As you see, I have a painting here. Now, this, this hummingbird was on the back of a painting I did. Um, I had three pieces of glass. I had a fisherman and mountains and a waterfall. And just on the back, I painted this hummingbird just for fun. And anyway, what happened with it fell one day. Everything broke but this one pane. So on the back, there was, there was a part of a waterfall because it was a, a group painting. I, I can explain that more another day. So <laughs> what I did was I painted the other side. So we have a close-up of a hummingbird on one side. And on this side, we have a real storm in the uh, orchid jungle. <laughs> so... Then Jack, we didn't know how to mount it, so he got this piece of hardwood and he just made a slit in it. We put a little silicone and now it can be on the counter. You can see a different picture from both sides. So I did that. So we are going to leave you now and uh, we'll be back with more fun and interesting things before you know it. Stay safe and stay happy. Love you all. Bye for now.